Blessed be God, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. 
Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Let us read together Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. From the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these 
is love. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over all the land, yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. And there were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their own town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
There are many times in the year when early memories are much closer to the surface than usual. This last week in January is always that way for me. My father was born on January 31st, 1925. He died on a January 24th and was buried on his 52nd birthday in 1977. So there's January 31st for me, right? But then on January 31st, 1988, I gave birth to my first son and dad's first grandson, named not for my dad, but for his own father and great-grandfather. So I suppose that it is not a surprise that I think a lot of my family in this last week of January, any January, I think a lot of small sons and fathers and the relationships between fathers and sons. But let's not leave my mom out of it. My mother used to read a book to my younger brother and me, The Big Honey Hunt by Stan and Jan Berenstain. Now, I was a little old for this book by the time it made its way into our house, but I wasn't too old to sit with mom when she was reading aloud. Now, this book, The Big Honey Hunt, it was the first in the dozens and dozens of Berenstain Bear books that have been published since 1962. It's a funny rhyming tale about a small bear and his hapless dad on the search for some honey. And I realize now that the book must have bored my mother out of her mind because she used to read it and intentionally drop in some random spoonerisms. We thought she was just doing it for us, but I think she was doing it to entertain herself <laughs> so that the title became The Hig Honey Bunt and Small Bear became ball smear. My brother still calls me ball smear sometimes, and I can remember my little brother's peal of laughter. Ball smear. Mm. Well, as I say, it's January, mm. and I seem to be dwelling in memory lane. The Berenstain Bears did not stop with hunting honey, as I bet most of you know. Between Stan and Jan, who are now departed this life, and their sons Leo and Mike, the Berenstains have written, get this, more than 300 titles, dozens of which ended up on the shelves of the Three Little Strouds in the 1980s and 90s. Ball smear. Many of their books are parents' helpers. That is, they are stories to help kids get used to hard or scary things, such as, you know, going to the doctor or welcoming a new baby or going to kindergarten, or getting your homework done on time. The Berenstain Bears rely on a formula. There's a problem or a worry. A parent tries to make it better. The problem gets a little worse. The small bear does their best. And in the end, everything is OK. So I hope you won't think me irreverent when I say that today's gospel lesson makes me think of writing my own small book. I might leave out the bears and just talk about Jesus. And I would call today's book, Jesus and How to Be the Church. Today's gospel lesson is actually the second part of a story. Last week we had the beginning of the story when Jesus went home to Nazareth and he attended worship in his home synagogue. He is the local boy made good, and it's Saturday morning, so, you know, on Saturday morning you go to synagogue. And he is invited to read the lesson for the day. And he stands up, and he walks to the platform, and with great care he unrolls the scroll, and then he reads the lesson for the day. <clears throat> and he clears his throat, and he reads very carefully from the words of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then Jesus rolls up the scroll and hands it to the attendant and goes and sits down again. And we are struck by the care and devotion that Jesus shows when he reads Holy Scripture. It's not unlike what we do here, right? We have lessons appointed for the day, and we have readers scheduled to read them. We send the lessons out in advance so that the readers may practice them. We have a special book with large print, and we put it on a special stand, and we have a light that brightens the page. And when the reader is done, she announces that she has just read the word of the Lord, and we all acknowledge it. Thanks be to God. The worship of God and the study of God's word is an important part of how we are the church. But of course there is more. And so today we get the second half of the story. Jesus has read the lesson from Holy Scripture and now he preaches about it. And what he teaches makes the people furious. You see, he points out to them that the promise of Holy Scripture is not about the individual comfort of each person in the room. After all, he says, you know, there have been lots of starving widows in the history of our people, but scripture only speaks about saving one of them. There have been lots of lepers in our history, but scripture only speaks about the healing of one. The message of Jesus is not about individual health or prosperity. The message of Jesus is about the commonwealth, the health of the community, working and living together. And what does the community need? Well, the Berenstain Bears will tell you that the community needs kids to go to the doctor and the dentist and to school. The community needs us to learn to play on teams and do our chores. And really, those little formulaic books about Ball Smear and his family have their basis in the stories that we call Holy Scripture. Jesus teaches us how to be the people of God, not just when we are at worship, because the church works in the world all week long. Jesus teaches us to seek out the least and the lost, to look for the folks on the edges of society, to reach out to those who have less, to see that their needs are met. There are lots of starving widows and lots of lepers who need healing, and Jesus lets us know that almost none of them will get supernatural miracles. But any one of them can get care from you and me. It's not the kind of sermon that anyone sitting in that synagogue in Nazareth wanted to hear that day. Maybe each one was wandering down their own memory lane. Maybe each one was weary with the roughness and difficulty of their present lives. They wanted personal comfort and individual vindication. Maybe they stretched it as far as their own family, a little wealth for the family, that would be okay, right? And they were hoping to find it by following all the rules. And so on Saturday morning, they were in the synagogue because that's what you do on Saturday mornings. Jesus, though, Jesus was not much into self-help. And he did not care much for personal comfort. He looked for the health and wholeness and the good of all of God's people. It made the congregation so angry that they chased Jesus out of the synagogue and almost off a cliff. But then the most remarkable thing happened. He turned into the crowd of them and walked through the midst of them and on ahead of them. My sisters and brothers and siblings, we are called to follow Jesus. And this week, he's calling me out of memory lane. And it is infinitely more scary than the first day of kindergarten, 
We are called to follow Jesus. So does that mean that we should be ready to be thrown off a cliff? But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Our gospel portion for today ends on that verse. And in the next two verses, Jesus walks on. He turns and he walks on to Capernaum and he starts teaching there. And there his authority is accepted. You see, we have such high expectations of ourselves and such low expectations of God. We expect that our behavioral behavior will earn us a relationship with God when God is right here with us all along. What Jesus did in that synagogue in Nazareth was not what the people expected. They were looking for individual salvation. But what Jesus offered was how to be the church, how to make the kingdom of God come true right here and right now. Of course, everything Jesus did was unexpected. He ate dinner with outcasts. There's another little book, Jesus and the Dinner Guest. He walked through violence and healed the sick with a touch. So there's another book, Jesus Touches the Sick. He forgave sinners as though he had authority from God to do so. Jesus and the mercy of God. He broke bread and shared wine. Jesus and the presence of God. He went to death on the cross. Jesus and the end of sorrow. Jesus teaches us that our care for all of God's people strengthens all of our relationships. All our relationships, not just the ones of small boys and their fathers. Look, this is not always easy. The love of God is not expected. The love of God is not earned. It doesn't make sense. It simply is. God loves because God is love. And God calls us to live into unexpected loving. That is what it means to follow Jesus. What did Jesus do? When it seemed like they were going to throw him off a cliff, he turned and walked through the midst of them. That is, he turned to face them. And if they wanted to, they were welcome to follow. And by the way, nobody fell off the cliff that day. And all up and down the coast, lives were changed. How about this for the title of the church's story? Follow Jesus and change the world. Now I invite you to stand with me as we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Shine in your church, O God. Embolden us in a dark world to speak truthfully and to act with courage, the courage of love, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine on your world, O God. Heal the warring of nations and the wounding of the earth to give us peace at last, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine for your people, O God. Make us one human family who clothe each other with mercy and feed each other with justice, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, O God. Help us to reach the heavens and deep in our souls, to seek you, to find you, and to know you, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine with the saints, both the living and the departed, O oh God. Today we remember especially Iraqi G. Kalfa and Georgiana Santo Kalfa, in whose memory the sanctuary life burned. Stuart Gates Webb, in whose memory altar memorials have been given, and all those who called for you now. Father Carol. Teach us to follow their lead to outrageous faith and eternal love, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine for all those for whom we pray, O oh God. Today we give thanks especially for the 34th birthday of William Stroud, for which altar memorials have been given. Remind us of your deep compassion and how you tenderly bear all our joy and all our sorrow. Robert. Nurses and doctors. And Christ, be our light. Provoking God, calling us through the face of the other, free our fickle hearts from our need to divide and exclude the foreign and the misfit. Lead us through the storms of rage to a clear and new beginning through Jesus Christ whom hatred cannot touch. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace to the stream team. God's peace to all of you who are in person and to those of you who are watching us online. Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Atonement here in Westfield, Massachusetts. We are glad that you are here. There are a few hearty individuals who have made it through the ice and cold to be here in person. And we know that we are also being joined online by YouTube or Facebook, or maybe you're even watching us on Sunday evening on Channel 15 here in Westfield. More information about our worship services and activities may be found in your service leaflet and in our weekly email. To, so to find those documents, go to our website, which is atonementwestfield.org, to learn more about us. Also, on that website, atonementwestfield.org, you will find the link to Zoom Coffee Hour, 
We are going to take up coffee hour by Zoom again, at least for the next several weeks, while both the cold weather and the coronavirus surge are keeping our numbers in person low. We can be in touch with one another on Zoom for coffee hour. So go to our website to push the button for that link, and we'll see you when this service is over. Next week, February 6th, next week, is the annual meeting of the Parish of the Church of the Atonement. So the schedule will be a little bit different next week. Here's what it is. There will be in-person worship. We will celebrate the Holy Eucharist at 8 a.m. next Sunday morning. Anyone is welcome to come to that service in person only at 8 a.m. At 10 a.m., we will begin with a service of morning prayer. It will be on Zoom or you can watch it streamed on Facebook or on um, YouTube at 10 a.m. When that service of worship is over, we will turn off the live stream, but we will stay on Zoom for the annual meeting of the parish. All are encouraged to attend. In order for it to be an actual annual meeting of the parish, we need to have 10% of the adult communicant members of the parish in attendance. So if you have been confirmed or received and you are 16 or older and your letter is at the Church of the Atonement, please sign on to that Zoom. So that leads me to a little thing about church membership. You know, all of us are members of Christ by baptism and all are welcome here at Church of the Atonement. There are ways to become members of Church of the Atonement by letting us know that you want to be and by having your membership be here and contributing financially and with your hours and your thoughts. Another way to join up is to become a member of the Episcopal Church worldwide, and we do that by confirming our faith in front of the bishop. And I'm telling you all of this because our bishop, Bishop Doug Fisher, will be visiting atonement on February 20th. So that is a great time for baptism and confirmation. And if you are interested in joining the Episcopal Church, if you are interested in joining in the life of Christ through baptism, talk to me now and we will get that organized. The bishop's visit again is February 20th. I want to thank all of you who have offered a pledge of financial support for the coming year. If you haven't had a chance to do so yet, I invite you to fill out a pledge card. You'll find them on the table in the narthex, or you can send me an email about it so that your life and labor can be part of the good that flows from this place. And please know that every contribution that you make, including what you are able to give today, goes to help this church share the transforming love of Jesus in a broken world. Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest.
Our service continues on page five in your service leaflet. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death. We proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Our service continues with the post-communion prayer, which is found in the middle of page 7 of your service leaflet. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And thanks be to God.